So the last video that I put out, I had talked about this Asiana Airlines Flight 214. It crashed in San Francisco on July 6th of 2013. And I had talked about how it was connected to the World Series that year. The Red Sox won the World Series on the same day that this plane crashed. The Red Sox won. They beat the Los Angeles Angels. They beat them 9-7. to seven. It was the 97th day of the Major League Baseball season that year. It was also the 109th World Series. It was 109 days before the World Series began. And the Red Sox beat Los Angeles. And in Gematria, Los Angeles equals 109. And there was more to it. You can go check out the video. I'll leave a link in the description. But it made me go back and just look at some of the other World Serieses. It's not the same with all of them, but at least, I, and I didn't really look at a whole lot of them. I just looked at like the last five years. I need to go back and look more into it. But last year we had the 111th World Series. It was the Royals who defeated the Mets in the World Series. So I went 111 days before, and the Royals just so happened to beat Tampa Bay 9-7. So, you know, just interesting, a pattern there of the 9-7, to seven, but also Tampa Bay and Gematria equals 79, the word champion equals 79, and notice the New York Mets also played San Francisco that day, they won 4-1, to one. in Gematria, if you write out San Francisco, it equals 122, if you write out Kansas City, it equals 122, so just interesting possibly foreshadowing the World Series that year, that they were going to play a team with 122 Gematria, and they were going to be the champion. It was 111 days before the 111th World Series. So this year, July 5th, just so happened to be 112 days before the 112th World Series. And July 5th in general, just interesting for the fact that it can be written as 5 slash 7, and if you write out World Series, it equals 57. Anyway, if you go to that day, I was looking through the, some of the scores and whatnot, and also some of the teams that we've been talking about. I've been talking about the Cubs, the Astros, the Rangers a little bit, also, uh, I talked about the Cleveland Indians because I've noticed a Native American type theme. And interesting, the Cleveland Indians defeated Detroit 12 to 1, but that also means that Detroit lost 1 to 12, right? 112 days before the 112th World Series, Detroit loses 1 to 12, a lot like 112 to Cleveland. And, you know, it possibly could be for Cleveland. But I feel like. The Cleveland connection is connecting back to the Chicago Cubs. But I'll show you why in a second. And I could possibly be wrong. Maybe this is definite coding for the Cleveland Indians to break, break the curse of Rocky Colavito. So let's just look at this curse again. It's the, the Cleveland curse here for the Indians. The curse of Rocky Colavito. And... What happened was they ended up trading Rocky Colavito for this other guy, Harvey Kuhn, or however you say these guys' names, but what's interesting about it, first off, is the fact that the Cleveland Indians on this day, they played the Detroit Tigers, and the big trade of the curse was to the Detroit Tigers, so they got rid of Rocky Colavito, and they picked up this guy, Harvey Kuhn, from Detroit, and... A while back I had mentioned the Aroldis Chapman trade and how it was connected to this guy because this guy actually died literally the same day that Chapman was born in 1988. He also died at the age of 57 like World Series. He played 57 games with the Chicago Cubs. Also, when Chapman got traded this year, it just so happened to be 148 days after his 28th birthday, right? So the 28th anniversary of that Harvey Kuhn guy dying. But if you write out Cleveland Indians in Gematria, it equals 148. And also, don't forget, in regards to Detroit, the Chicago Cubs are also cursed from the curse of the Billy Goat that 
just so happened to be from the 1945 World Series, and they were playing Detroit as well. Another reason that I think it's connected to the Cubs and not as much to the Cleveland Indians, which I could just be reading it wrong or seeing it wrong, but this guy died on the 59th day of the year. Also, he was the batting champion in the year 1959, and 112 days, the day that Detroit lost 1-12 to to the Indians, the Cubs also lost to the Cincinnati Reds 5-9, to a lot like 59 also, in Gematria, Cleveland equals 51, Cincinnati equals 51, so possibly a sign saying the Cubs are going to play Cleveland or something like that as well, you know, because they played a 51 team. The Indians even got their 51st win on this game, so they got their 51st win, Cleveland equals 51, but Detroit, the team that the Indians beat, Detroit equals 91, and if you write out Chicago Cubs, it equals 91. So I feel like it might be a, a sign saying the Indians are going to play the Cubs, or the Indians are just more foreshadowing to the Cubs, you know? But also, one of the other teams that we've been talking about is the Astros playing the Cubs in the World Series. Because if you write out the word Houston, Houston equals 112. We'll just write it out really quick. Houston equals 112, so that would be pretty fitting for them to be in the uh, 112th World Series. But if you write out Houston Astros the small way, Houston Astros the small way also equals 51. So possibly all of the Cleveland coding could literally be connected to the Cubs and the Astros. Anything regarding 51 and 91, I think is what it's all coded to. One other thing I didn't point out about the curse of Rocky Cole Vito, now that I'm thinking about it, the trade actually happened on April 17th of 1960 when he got traded to the Detroit Tigers. April 17th, in 1960 it was actually a leap year, so literally it was the 108th day of the year even. And remember, the Chicago Cubs haven't won a World Series in 108 seasons. The Willis Tower in Chicago is 108 stories tall. Major League Baseball, the first game ever played was on 5-4 of 1871. The word baseball equals 54 in Gematria, but in 1871, five months, four days later, was October 8th, right? That can be written as 10 slash 8, a lot like 108. That was when the Great Chicago Fire started. It was 145 years ago, even. If you write out Chicago, Illinois, it equals 145. If you write out the word 145, it equals 108. And I talk a whole lot about this stuff in my Eraldus Chapman trade video. I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. There is a whole lot of stuff going on with that story. It even ties into a movie that you can find on YouTube, or like a seven and a half minute video called I Pet Goat 2. And the Cubs are cursed from the curse of the Billy Goat and whatever, you know, lots of stuff with it. Another thing I guess I didn't point out in regards to the Indians is that World Series equals 57. This game was on 5 slash 7. And Chief Wahoo in Gematria equals 57 the small way. The big way it equals 93. And this was also the 93rd day of the season. So possibly could be something in regards to the Indians. And, I mean, if it's the Indians, I think they're going to play the Cubs. Or, you know, possibly all of the coding to the Cubs is actually just the Cubs pointing to the Indians. But, you know, we'll see. I'm just going to keep following this, but there's very interesting patterns going on here. Also, the score was, wasn't was only 5-9, to nine, it was 9-5, to five, right? If you write out the word 95, it equals 57, just like World Series. The Cubs stayed on 52 wins. The word prophecy equals 52. If you write out 59, it equals 54 like baseball. Also, 108, the number connected back to the Chicago Cubs. Also, in regards to 7-5 or July 5th, that was also the day that Alton Sterling died, a big news story this summer. We didn't get the story until July 6th, though. But he did actually die on July 5th, so just interesting. 
And it was also the Cubs' 83rd game and the Indians' 83rd game. I just found it interesting if you total that up, it equals 166. Just like Alton Sterling the big way. If you write out 83, it equals 67, just like Alton Sterling the small way with the S exception. And like I said, I've also talked about the Astros a little bit. Lots of foreshadowing. They equal 112. But that same day, they beat the Mariners. And the Mariners stayed on 43 wins. Mariners equals 43 in Gematria. The word champion also equals 43 in Gematria. The Astros also won 5-2, to two, like the word prophecy. They stayed, or they got their 45th win. If you write out Chicago Cubs the small way, it equals 45. So possibly foreshadowing the Astros to beat the Cubs in the World Series. So I also looked at the Rangers and the Red Sox game that was on July 5th as well. Interesting that the Rangers beat them and they got their 53rd win and Boston Red Sox equal 53 in Gematria. It was also the Rangers 85th game. Red Sox equals 85, Boston equals 85. And the reason that we've mentioned the Texas Rangers is the fact that all these people announcing their retirement or retiring, we had Prince Fielder, A-Rod, and however you say that guy's name, Teixeira, I believe it is, Mark Teixeira. And they all had ties back to the Rangers. And the Rangers, you know, right now have a pretty decent record. But if you've been watching, Houston seems to be playing a lot better. And they also play the Rangers, I believe, six more times. And they play the Mariners three more times, I believe. I can't remember for sure, but I know they play these guys. They're in the same division. So it definitely the Ranger, or the Astros could completely come back. The only thing in regards to this theory... With the 112, I don't see the big significance between them playing the Red Sox and how it ties into the 112th World Series. It seems more fitting for either the Astros, the Indians, or the Cubs, you know, so. So, it looks like that's all I have to say. Um, you know, we'll see. Like I said, I'm going to keep following the story. But I have noticed a whole lot of Native American theming just in the news and whatnot. And for whatever the reason, YouTube copyright claiming my videos. And they're showing me something to do with a Native American or an Indian theme. The Indians went on the 13-game winning streak earlier this year. But I feel like it's either... I know I said it before, but I feel like it's either going to be the Indians versus the Cubs, the Astros versus the Cubs... Or maybe the Indians are literally just connecting to the Cubs, or the Cu or vice versa, you know? And if the Cubs don't make it, and the Indians do, the other team that I had mentioned was the New York Giants, and the connection to when the fan got thrown out of the Philadelphia game, and they lost 8-13, to and if the Giants make the World Series and lose, they'll be 8-13 and in World Series is. I think I talk about that in the Errolus Chapman video. I'll also leave a link to this blog so you can just go up to the search engine here. You can just type in Chapman. You'll probably find it. Otherwise, just go to July. You'll find it for sure. But going to end it there. I need to go back as well and look at more World Series and how they connected to the pattern that I'm trying to show here and see if they're, you know, see if there's something that I'm missing with it. But it definitely seems like it's a pretty obvious pattern if you know what you're looking for. Anyway, I'm rambling. Have a good one.